Patty, have received the proposed program for the first Pro Nova concert. As usual, there are a few changes that I would suggest. 1. Biographical dates. Dvorak died in 1904, not in 1944. If the printed date stands, that would make him 103 years old, dying close to the end of World War II, when I was in France and Germany in U.S. Army uniform, and you were undoubtedly looking through the bars of a crib. 2. In the manuscript and the first edition of Dvorak's Quartet, the second movement's title presents the dance, a la polka, first, and then qualifies it with the allegretto scherzando afterward. So I would suggest the following pattern. So I should read, a la polka, allegretto scherzando. 3. The Torina needs a bit of tinkering. As it is presented, the picture conjured up in the audience's mind is a series of six movements, like the Haydn Quartet that precedes it on the program. However, this is not what actually happens on playing the piece. It depicts what goes through a Toreador's mind as he prays before an altar, before he goes into the ring to do his thing. All sorts of visions slip through his mind, and the music follows his train of thoughts without pause, as a sort of stream of consciousness. And the music follows this prayer, using identifiable musical motifs that we associate with Spain, Andalusia, and bullfighting. The long and the short of it is that the piece is about eight to nine minutes long and is played without a break. I suggest that the list of movements be scrapped completely to avoid a psychological problem in the audience, expecting one thing and getting another, feeling short-changed and not appreciating the very beautiful and moving music. I shall write a note to Aurora and explain my reasoning behind the Torino. Nice doing business with you again. Hans.
Your comment that I know a lot intrigues me. Certainly my having been around for 94 plus years has given me a longer chance to accumulate a lot more stuff in those gray cells compared to someone who has died at the retirement age of 65. I think too that my ordinary sleep pattern, being five hours a night instead of eight, gives me a bonus of three hours a day that other people don't have. If those hours can be multiplied by 365 and then 90 years, that gives me a lot more time of input. And since I haven't shaved for 60 years and making an estimate of 15 minutes per shave, I have even gotten an additional amount of time to accumulate both wisdom and detritus. Actually, I think I simply have inherited genes from ancestors and attitudes that accompany my Germanic cultural background, viz. the antics of McCall Smith's Professor von Ibelfeld and fellow academics in that wonderful Portuguese Irregular Verbs epic, is a good example of what lurks underneath my receding hairline. I, however, trace a definite starting point when my parents brought me the multi-volume Book of Knowledge when I was about eight or nine. I'd get up in the morning while the rest of the family was asleep, curl up in the easy chair in the living room, read, and look at fascinating pictures. It went on from there to finish of my formal education, when the funding provided by the GI Bill for war veterans ran out two years into a PhD in musicology at Northwestern U. I ramble on.